We've reached part two of our fire carrier project where we've now made four fire carriers, each made from different materials and methods. So now it's time for the fun stuff. We're gonna put them to the test. Punishing test, soaking test, test with results that even surprised us. But before we can test them, we gotta light them. And if you're new to our channel, you might be surprised to see our method for doing this because we're gonna do it using flint and steel, but without any charred material using three common natural plants from the wild. So much going on here in part two, and we're starting now. It's time to light our carriers, and to do that, we're gonna use flint and steel on uncharred plant tenders. Now, we use the term flint for convenience sake, but there's several stones that we commonly use which are hard enough to work for this method. Here, we're breaking up a stone that has a lot of quartz, which will do just fine for getting the sparks we need. We wanted to get several pieces off just in case one piece gets too dull to make a spark before we get an ember in our tinder. Now, if you saw our original video covering our crazy discovery of three common plants that'll take a spark from a flint and steel without charring first, you'll definitely recognize this plant that stole the show. Watch close and you're gonna see why. Eight strikes, that's it. Dried, uncharred, stinging nettle stalks, processed and peeled, took a spark in eight strikes. And it's not just how quick it took a spark. What amazes us is how it clings to the spark with very little nurture needed. In fact, just fanning it with our hand is enough to help establish it, but often it doesn't even need that. So we've had several requests for more details on how to prep this nettle for this exact purpose, and trust us, it won't work unless it's prepped right. So we promise that video is coming soon. But first we gotta get these four carriers lit up. Let's showcase Stinging Nettle one more time. We'll try to beat eight strikes and then we'll ignite our first carrier. Okay, come on. Now that was three strikes. Now even the most traditional char-loving fire maker has got to admit this nettle is amazing and belongs in the reliable tender conversation for flint and steel fire making. All right, moving on. We like to preserve as much of this magic spark catching tinder as possible, so we tear it off into chunks once it catches. We've learned that not only is it extremely unlikely to go out, but it actually becomes difficult to put out when we try. So it's a great way to ignite your nest. First carrier in line for ignition is our nettle stock carrier wrapped in willow bark. And you're gonna see how it flames up big and quick at first. You might even think that it looks like a regular torch that'll burn up real fast, but this is not a torch. We leave the excess nettle above the wrapping for this exact purpose. We want it to flame up big and establish itself so it can start smoldering down into the wrapped portion of the carrier. The goal with these fire carriers is to have them smoldering at all times and only flaming up when you need them to. Okay, time to light our next carrier. For this one, we're gonna use flint and steel again, but this time, no nettle. We're gonna use another superstar from our original flint and steel no char video, and that's Great Burdock. Let's see how it does compared to the nettle. Now, it's common that we'll have a spark catch before we realize it, and we don't even notice it until we see or smell smoke. In this case, it was strike number five that did the job. The burdock ember went to a cedar nest and then we used that to light what we call our quick carrier. This was by far the most simple carrier and easiest to make. Basically, we just scored some cedar bark, filled it with processed cedar tinder and tied it in the middle. This carrier isn't really designed to last all day since it doesn't have any green wrapping to protect the embers from flaming up, but we have learned that we can help prevent this just by holding it tight and placing some weight on it while it rests. And while fire carriers rest, they might even trick you into thinking they've gone out, but there remains a fire in its belly that can quickly be nurtured into a flame anytime you want. Okay, this tinder is about to blow you away. Successful embers on strike one and strike three. This was a case where we didn't realize we had one until after raining sparks down on it for a few seconds. But success had already been achieved thanks to ground up Pacific Waterleaf. Waterleaf gets the honor of igniting my personal favorite carrier, which was our standard carrier made from processed cedar bark and wrapped in cedar bark strips, grass, and ferns. 
It's my favorite because of its crazy durability and longevity, which you'll see here in a couple minutes. Okay, just one more flint and steel fire for good measure. Let's go with burdock tinder. Nah, we'll do nettle again. Or well, let's just use both and see who wins. Three strikes, that's it. Today was another huge victory for flint and steel with no char. Now, let's light the last carrier and get on with some durability tests. The final carrier is our hodgepodge or debris carrier. This is the one that's just made out of dry miscellaneous stuff that we found laying around. Leaves, bark, moss, any smoldering material we could find. We made a light structure out of nettle stalks and then wrapped it with a willow cord. Again, we want it to flame up big at first so it can become established and work its way down into the protected wrapped area. And now it's time to see what these four carriers can do. After several hours of activity and hiking around, these fire carriers are behaving just like we'd hoped. They've gone into their deep smolders where they basically take care of themselves. In fact, they can appear so dormant that you might think they've gone out altogether. But all it takes is a little bit of increased air to see them come to life and blowing them into flame is no problem at all. You will notice though the difference between the cedar carrier wrapped in ferns and the other carriers. The cedar carrier is barely even smoking, even though it holds a strong ember inside of it. The carriers wrapped in just willow are definitely more prone to flaming up when the air is moving, which is what we're trying to avoid. So if we had to choose a model, it would be the cedar carrier wrapped in the grass and ferns. Our expectation is that these standard size carriers will go eight to 10 hours depending on the wind conditions. All right, let's get on with some river experiments. If you've got any fire making experience in the wild, you already know that grabbing driftwood that's just laying along the river isn't always the best choice. Many times this wood has recently been floating in the river and a lot of times it isn't the best variety of wood for fire making, even if it was dry. But sometimes you just can't be picky and you just need a fire when you need it. So we grabbed a random armful of this stuff so we could show you how fire carriers handle suboptimal kindling like this. Now we've talked many times on this channel about how much we love smoldering tinders like cedar because of their ability to slowly dry out kindling that might have more moisture in it. Well, fire carriers are the ultimate smoldering tinder and they know how to dry out your materials until they eventually burst into flame. This kindling had been washed down river and sitting out in the rain, mostly on the ground for months. We also set a few all time records for rainfall this spring in the Pacific Northwest so that should give you some idea about this kindling's lack of quality. But our hodgepodge debris carrier really had no trouble at all drying out this kindling so we could blow it into flame and we honestly weren't surprised. But now let's take it to the next level. What if your suboptimal kindling were soaked in the rain? Well, we didn't have any rain on this day, so let's just dunk it in the river. What do you all think is gonna happen? Well, of course, it's not just going to burst into flame, but watch how all that condensed heat in the cedar carrier slowly dries out the kindling right above it until eventually the flame spreads throughout the whole pile. And you know, we've actually been asked before when talking about fire carriers, why not just carry a lighter? Well, I've got so many answers to that question. But it should be obvious from this demo, for one, a lighter cannot do that. We've been asked before, what do you do about rain when you're carrying your fire carrier? So we decided to make a protective case for our fire carrier to give it some protection from pouring down rain. Let's see how it would hold up in a serious downpour. So when doing this experiment, we decided to not hold back and give this carrier more water than what it would receive during any normal rain event. One time in the high desert country with a group of students, we were slammed with a large thunderstorm and a downpour of rain. As soon as the rain started, we made sure our carrier was protected and it saved the day by igniting a very large fire under a dead juniper tree, which provided heat and some much needed comfort to some very cold, wet, and even frightened students in that group. Soaking the case actually ended up helping this carrier by preventing it from flaming up in the light breeze. Cool. This thing is still burning hot, as our little visitor can attest to. Now, even though we know how durable these carriers are, 
This part of the testing was not easy for us to perform. It may have hurt us more than it hurt the fire carriers, but it had to be done. After pounding and stomping this nettle carrier for a while, it definitely did some damage, but still it was able to come back strong. We found that the nettle carrier was probably the least durable of the four carriers, but nonetheless, it was definitely a worthwhile carrier to make. So we decided to ratchet up the abuse for our standard cedar carrier. This poor thing received several minutes of stomping and pounding. But the reason we had to go through these demonstrations is to show how durable the embers are inside the carriers, especially the ones made from cedar. It should go without saying what an advantage that is in the wild to have a reliable source of fire at your disposal anytime you need it. A source of fire that'll just sit there for hours and hours, quite literally all day if you need it to. And hopefully these demonstrations prove what we mean when we say that once the embers are established, we don't worry about them going out. The cedar carrier wrapped in fern has been our classic standard version of carrier through the years as a result of its convenience to make and obvious durability. In fact, it's so durable, we can even dunk it in the water and it's still... Nah, kidding of course. It took a dip in the river to put this thing out, but watch what happens even after being totally submerged. The charred cedar was able to quickly reestablish sustainable embers. And how long are we talking when we say quickly? Well, under a minute, 42 seconds to be exact by our timer. So we had a full fun day while these carriers were burning, including an entertaining run-in with a blue-tailed skink. Now these little lizards are quick to drop their tails to confuse predators, and it definitely worked on us. Its tail wiggled all over the place, which was very distracting, and the lizard easily got away. And not to worry, his tail will grow right back again. Now as the sun went down, we started thinking about the most practical uses for fire carriers that we've enjoyed over the years. And that got us thinking about fishing. Now we love fishing. And whether it's modern or primitive, we always seem to push our luck right up until near dark in the pursuit of just one more bite. Well, many times we'll just cook our fish right there when we're fishing, and it's so nice to know that our fire's already been made. And all we need to do is get some kindling piled up on top of our carrier to get a nice cooking fire started. But there's other times where we decide to haul our catch back to camp to maybe even share with family and as much as we love fire starting, we don't necessarily always look forward to getting a fire started after dark, after a jam-packed day of work and fun, including a long hike back to camp with a string of fish. So the peace of mind we have knowing our fire is basically already made and literally in our hand is a great feeling indeed. Because it takes so little effort to get a nice cooking fire going when all you have to do is pile some kindling on top of your already burning, reliable, durable fire carrier. And fire carriers aren't only for survival or convenience, they're also just for enjoyment and satisfaction and a great feeling of security. For us, there's always been a little something extra special about keeping the same fire with us throughout our entire journey or even our entire camping trip and thinking about all the good that it's done for us. In fact, this was a concept deeply appreciated by many Native American cultures who derived special symbolism from carrying fire and would carry the same fire for days and weeks to new camps, not just for practical purposes, but because there was a great importance in some tribes to have continuity in their fires that represented the longevity and prosperity of their tribes, which is why they would keep the same fire burning when moving from camp to camp. They believed that fire was a blessing from their creator and it gave them many gifts and helped them to live. So in respect for this and to honor their creator, they kept it going and carried it from place to place. To them, this practice of fire carrying was above anything else, a spiritual practice. And that is a perspective and feeling that we carry as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, if you learned something, let us know in the comments. Also, if you want to support what we're doing, the best thing you can do is just hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on everything that we got coming up for you guys.